In today's video, we're gonna unbox some uniform parts and also teach you how to care for the leather goods on your kilt uniform. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about giving the video a like, subscribing to the channel, and hitting that bell icon to be notified of when I post new videos. I also give Skype lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. All right, everybody, I have some more uniform components here. So uh, in this box from Lone Star Piper, uh, run by Mr. Jeremy Downs again, I have a cross belt, spats, and a brooch. I have the rest of the pieces I need to complete my uniform. Well, except for maybe the feather bonnet, but you know, those things are expensive. I have my knife ready, but it doesn't look like I'm going to need it. Let's go ahead and uh, just kind of tear into this thing. All right, here we go. And number one. Oh, it's all just kind of coming out at the same time. All right, that's clearly everything in that box. We're going to start with this brooch here because why not? Here we go. All right. Wow. I decided to go with blue. Brings out my eyes. Uh, so I got a blue pin here. Um, now, I've never worn the Piper's Plate before. I do have one, but uh, that'll be an adventure in its own about how to put that on. I don't know if there'll be a tutorial on that. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing yet, so showing you guys how to do it. Huh. I'm going to look up some videos myself. But I uh, see how that pen works, and it's a nice heavy-duty pin that goes inside the brooch here and some lovely thistle decorations all over this. So lovely, lovely, lovely. Let's put that back in its box here. Okay. Next, we'll move on to the spats with black buttons, which I think look great. Let's... And uh, these are actually sized, uh, which is kind of cool right there. It actually has, it's not just small, medium, large. So uh, it'll be nice knowing that these are not too big for my feet. So that's great. Yeah, okay, so while there are buttons, there's also some Velcro. So it looks like the top button and the bottom button are functional and the rest of the buttons are um, behind some Velcro. So that works out well. It keeps me from having to well button. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight buttons, two is better than eight with some elastic at the bottom. I already have some hose tops to go along with this black and red diced hose tops. Um, so yeah, so spats. So again, if you wanted to see them, we got some hook and loop tape, I should say. Uh, this might not be Velcro. This is from RG Hardy, Piper's Spats. And uh, again, they are sized. And there are buttons for the top and bottom and Velcro or hook and loop enclosures for the rest. And then the thing I've been waiting for most excitedly, I have to admit, is the belt, the cross belt right here. So there we go. Okay. Again, thistle designs all over it. And uh, these are sized to you to some degree, I believe. I was asked for what my height was when I ordered it. But it does have some adjustment points along here. And this is actually the leather. I had actually wondered because the belt on the actual, uh, for the kilt or for over the doublet in this case, uh, this is solid in the middle, and I could never actually tell in photos what exactly was going on here. But now I see that you got the uh, the belt where it comes through to connect into the holes, and that again is just black leather in there. And then this adjustment right here kind of helps you hold the uh, the piper's plate in place. But again, I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't know how to do any of that. So we got a lovely cross belt right here. Now, that being said, I'm going to show you what I do with leather goods when I get them to make sure that they are nourished, hydrated, ready to go, and that will last me a long time. So I'll show you my process when I get new leather goods. Now, the typical kilt outfit has quite a few pieces of leather on it. You might have your belt if you're wearing one of those. You have part of your sporin chain, and in the back of even a sporin chain is a bit of leather. There's the leather, actually the, the straps on the kilt itself, all of those things should be nourished and protected. And I know a lot of people, it just doesn't really occur to them to do that. So when I get a new piece of leather, the first thing I do is use some sort of leather lotion. Now, I tend to go with, uh, I have some Allen Edmonds higher end leather lotion here. And while this is fine, 
you don't have to go this fancy. You can go to a drugstore and just get some Kiwi leather lotion and it works pretty well. It uh, won't bring out quite the luster necessarily of the higher end stuff, but it still does a great job of hydrating your leather. So I take the Kiwi leather lotion, go ahead and shake it, make sure that it's good to go. And I'm actually gonna put just a little bit on my fingers like that. And I'm gonna start at one end of the belt here just to know where I'm starting. And I'm actually gonna apply it by hand. So I've never even worn this belt and yet I'm immediately putting some protection on it. And that little bit goes quite a bit further than you might think because this slides on here. And it, it basically just smells like, you know, lotion, skin care lotion. Kind of going with my uh, pinky a little bit to get it out of the, the grooves there. Just rubbing it in to the leather. And uh, we're going to pull this back and see if maybe you can see the difference on camera here. So very shiny, not nearly as shiny. Can you make out to uh, see if I can do a nice, just solid line right there of where it's been nourished and where it hasn't. So you can see there's a sheen and then right there is the line where it's not as protected. So I'm just gonna keep rubbing that in for a few more seconds, kind of letting it dry in place. And for now, I'm gonna go up to the belt and I'm actually just gonna use the little bit that's right around the top of the lid right now to kind of continue up under the buckle a little bit here, rubbing it in just with my fingers. All right, and we're gonna give that just a beat to dry. And while we're waiting for that to dry, you can do this on sporins too. Now I wouldn't apply it to the furry part on this one, but the other parts of your sporin, a little bit of leather lotion. Again, I tend to just use my finger. You could put it on a towel. I just find that that wastes more product. I've never had any of these things hurt my fingers. Now, I also don't apply this to the suede side of the leather. I'm applying this to the shiny side, the finished side of the leather only. Again, so I'm working it into the top flap. I'll work it across the bottom. I'll actually continue to work it in along the edges of the sporin here where it's smooth. I am not going to be applying it, however, to the suede side. It specifically says, do not add to the suede side of your leather. So I've got the top flap now pretty much done. We're gonna put this aside and I'm gonna feel if this is dry to the touch and it's feeling pretty dry. So from here, I take a clean horsehair brush. Again, this is just a Kiwi brush. You could use higher end brushes. It doesn't really matter. And I'm actually going to use with a little bit more force than you might think. I'm going to actually just kind of brush the, the leather. And what you're going to find if while you're looking at this is it's going to even the sheen out and make everything far more level. You might see a couple bristles come out when these are new. These brushes are new. That's just fine. There's plenty of bristles on here. And again, this is specifically for shoes, but you can use it on belts as well. After this is, is nice and dry, you can go even further and add a clear, a neutral polish to this to bring even more shine up. What I am going to do is take an old nylon. I actually, um, no, I don't just wear these. Um, I, I, you can put your kilt in here, actually. Um, you can roll it up and put it in. That'll be a video for a future time. But this one's gotten kind of old. So I have this old nylon pair of pantyhose. And with this, this is a great thing to just kind of quickly buff the outside yet again. And I'll tell you, it really brings out the shine and it helps you get even better into those little areas by the belt there. So with that, I have a nice, protected, nourished, bit of leather right here. Now I'm going to continue this um, through the whole belt. And again, I wouldn't call the back of this suede exactly, but it's not completely finished. So I'm again, not going to apply it to the back. And also that's going to be resting against the uniform. And I wouldn't want any of this to rub off on the uniform. I want to make sure this is dry and not in any way oily. Uh, so it doesn't rub off on the wool and cause any problems there. But let's say you did want to bring out an extra bit of shine in your leather or even give it some more protection. The lotion is great at nourishing the leather, but if you want to kind of actually kind of trap it in there in a good way, you can add some shoe polish to your belt. Now I go with a neutral shoe polish. This has no color to it. 
So it just brings out some shine, adds a layer of uh, wax protection to the outside of the belt. But I go with this so that it doesn't rub off on any of my uniform components. If it's a black shoe polish and you don't absolutely buff every last bit of it off, it could rub off on your doublet, on your, your jacket. Those are black, that might be okay. But what if it was just a white dress shirt and you're wearing a vest, you could get black on your shirt, ruin your shirt, don't ruin your stuff. So I recommend clear shoe polish if you're going to do this. So what all do I have here? So again, I just have some Kiwi, but there's all sorts of neutral shoe polishes out there. Any of them I'm sure would work fine. I just always use Kiwi. It's available again at just a, a drugstore nearby. So I got the neutral Kiwi here. I have some ice water that uh, just a couple little ice cubes there. I have a cut up old shirt. In fact, I just got a bit of the sleeve right here, 100% cotton. Um, there are actual like shoe polishing chamois and other things, but I find just a 100% a cotton shirt is a great way. They don't cost anything. You probably have an old one that you can just cut up yourself. Um, so yeah, just a soft cotton shirt. And I also have that uh, s uh, pair of pantyhose that we had earlier, uh, the nylon here that we're gonna use for a final buffing at the end. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of put this around my fingers. Now, I know many of you probably know how to shine shoes, but not everybody. It's uh, kind of getting to be a bit of a lost art. So I just kind of wrap it around so I have a little bit of tension on the shirt. And I'm just going to take the wax. I'm kind of heating it up just a little bit with my fingers. And you can see, boom, right on there. And this time, I'm going to be just using my regular kilt belt rather than the cross belt. A little easier on camera here. And I'm just gonna start right at the, the buckle end here, and I'm just going to start applying the wax into the belt. That's kind of clanky. So it goes on a little bit hazy. We'll see if that uh, comes through. Yeah, you can see that. So I'm gonna apply a little bit more. I'm actually gonna put just a little bit more polish on my cloth here, and just keep working the polish into the belt. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just do the full length of the belt. You can tell when it's starting to not spread as well. So just put a little bit more on there. It's a nice thin layer. I'm not trying to kick it on super heavy. I'd rather have several light layers than one big thick layer of wax. Seems to have built up a better shine Though I'm not going for a mirror shine or anything on this. That's a, a little much for a belt. This flexes everywhere. The mirror shine could crack. And I'm even going to get the little extra loops it comes with here. And I'm going around. I'm even going to polish, put a little polish on the backside. Though, again, not the suede backside. Like We're going to give this a good couple of minutes to dry before we buff it off, so we'll be back in just a second. All right, it's been a couple of minutes, and the polish is now dry and ready to come off. If you want to know if the polish is ready, you can take just a bit of your towel and just rub it and see if it's shiny when it comes off or if it's still kind of spreading around and clouding up. You should see it being shiny. And that being said, I like to get just a tiny little bit of ice water on my towel here to kind of lubricate just a little bit. You don't want it dripping wet, just a little damp. And then I'm just going to again buff now the wax off of the belt. Not too much pressure. I'm not pressing too hard. It's kind of like, um, like if you were polishing an egg, like you wouldn't want to crack the egg, crush the egg shell underneath. But to bring out the shine, you do need a little bit of force and a little bit of, of speed. And that's looking much shinier. That looks great. Again, this is going to add a lot of protection to the leather as well as the, the shine. You want to look your best, you know? When we go out, the kilt and all that looks great no matter what. But man, if you got all your leather goods polished and looking great, it just adds an extra pop to your outfit. And I think your clients are going to like it. And your stuff will last longer. A little bit more cold water. You see, this doesn't take very long. And this isn't something you have to do terribly often. I probably, every 18 months, I mean, I 
You can shine it as much as you want, but some of it has to do with how often you wear it as well. I actually don't wear my kilt belt terribly often because much of the time I'm actually in a vest or waistcoat or waistcoat. And uh, when those are properly worn, you don't wear a belt under it because it kind of, well, you can see it under the vest. And I'm going to move to a slightly different part of the towel now of my cotton shirt here just to make sure I'm not building up you know wax and kind of putting it back in we're trying to get the, the polish the wax polish off you can kind of feel when it gets a little dry underneath there is no standing water on the the leather though it's not that wet it's I'm making sure that it's just ever so slightly damp not drenched in just a couple of minutes we have a nice shiny belt look at that that thing looks great it's super shiny it's well protected now again kind of like i did with the leather lotion i'm going to take that old nylon and then just to add a little bit more sheen yet still and we're going to see if you can see the difference on camera right there versus there it's it's eh, yeah you can see it like boom right there it is a little bit shinier And just like that, you get a much, much shinier belt. I've had this belt for 15 years, something like that. I've gotten, I mean, this belt is not new in any way. And then the final thing, just a little tip when you're wearing these. So you have your belt. One thing, they go the opposite way that you might think. There's actually a little, on a lot of these, there's a little bow design at the bottom. And for years, I was wearing my belt the wrong way around on a kilt. It goes the opposite direction than you're used to. So it goes around the left. And then when it's around now, I'm putting it high just so you can see it. So you got the one retainer right here. The other retainer, if it has to, not every belt does, but if it has two retainers, the other one goes right against the buckle on the other side. So it's nice and matched. I've actually built up a little bit of string. I took some waxed hemp actually so you can see it there I took some wax temp and actually built it up so that that retainer stays in place with there we go and it doesn't want to slide so just an idea so that this kind of will stay put and not be moving around on you well, there you go, everybody. There's a little bit more on a couple uniform components as well as how to care for the leather goods on your kilt outfit. Do you have any other tips or tricks on how you care for your leather? I'd love to hear about them. Well, thank you so much for watching. If you got something out of the video, please think about giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, and commenting below with any thoughts you might have. If you want to support the channel, I do have a Patreon where as little as a dollar a month goes a long way to helping support the channel. So there's a link in the description below, and you can see it right here on the screen. Head over there, check it out. If you want a more personalized instruction, I do give Skype and online lessons. Head over to www.mattpiper.com or email me at the address you see here and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet and I'd love to work with you soon. I also have a line of bagpipe merchandise, the Command Your Bagpipe line. So there's hats and shirts and well, water bottles and pillows and all sorts of fun stuff. So bagpipe stuff is cool. So check it out and show the world that you, well, command your bagpipe. All right, everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and until next time, cheers. Cheers.